God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death. We are all going to face death one day. And by dying, it proves the fact out of the Bible that you are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. Your death will prove that you are a sinner. And since you are a sinner, you've got to do something before you die. Because if you die in your sin, you die without the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You die without believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You will die in your sins and you will be placed into a place called hell. And in hell you'll be there for all eternity paying for your sins. But your sins have been paid already. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Your sin debt has already been paid, waiting for you to believe and trust in what God has done for you already, which eliminates religion eliminates works, not of works, least any man should boast. You've got to come to the knowledge that you're going to die, you're going to face judgment, prepare to meet that God. Now, you don't believe in God, I don't care, you're going to meet that God, you don't believe and have to give an account of yourself. I'm a Catholic, your popes will stand before the God, your Holy Father will stand before the Holy Father and call your Holy Father a hypocrite and a liar and cast them off into a burning hell which burns forever. For Jesus said there's only one Holy Father and that's God the Father. And Jesus also said, I am the way. When it comes to your sins, when it comes to your death, Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way but the way of Jesus Christ. If you got anything, if you are trusting anything or nothing, if it's other than the Lord Jesus Christ, you will die in your sins. And it's something to think about because dying your sins, as everybody doesn't want to hear, even Christians, is a place called Lake of Fire. We are standing here by Mark 16 saying, Go ye all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel that Christ died for your sins, was buried according to the scriptures, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Why? Because you've got a sin condition. You have a terminal disease called death, called sin, and you need to get it out right now. Because if you do not get it out right now, you're going to face hell. Hell needs to be preached. Because that's why Christ came. He came to die upon that cross because of your sin. Everyone has sins. Young, old, you are born in Adam's nature. You are a sinner and you're going to die. But, the Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You've got to come to the Lamb of God. You've got to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, the Bible says. There is salvation no other. There's no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. There's no other name. It's not Joseph Smith. It's not JWs. It's not a Pope. It's no man but the Lord Jesus Christ which can save you from your sins. You have been born into rebelling against God as your first nature. You have in you a nature to seek God, and you have a nature in you to defy God. The very fact is that as we preach the gospel week after week after week, you don't come out and do what God tells you to do. shows that you are rebelling ever since back to Grandpa Adam when God told him to not take that fruit, and he took that fruit with Grandma Eve. And we, we have been rebelling against God ever since. 
must be trouble with your first fur. Thanks to your mom and your dad, I said your mom and your dad, not your dad and dad and not your mom and mom, but thanks to your mom and dad, you were born with a condition that marks you for death. You were born to die. We just don't know when. And on your tombstone, we're going to mark a birth date, and we're going to mark a death date, and that dash between the two dates is your life, and that dash better have included believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You can do all kinds of things in that dash on your tombstone, but if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, after your death, you will be burned in a lake of fire which burneth forever. And yet, as miserable creatures we are as human beings and rejecting God, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God is no meaning. God is no terror. God is not against you when He has given you the life flow, the life blood needed for you to be saved and to enter into glory and enter into heaven. And it's not religion. For Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The way, the truth, and the life are met by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man... No man, that's you and me, cometh unto the Father, that's God, except by me. Now the statement that Jesus has made, you can't get to the God of the Father except by Jesus alone. Peter will not be at the pearly gates to welcome you. And if Peter was at the pearly gates and you were a Gentile, be careful. He don't like Gentiles. Acts chapter 10. You're going to face God as Jesus Christ one day. Jesus who is God and God who is Jesus. You're going to face Him one day and say, What did you do with my son? What did you do with Calvary? Did you reject Calvary, or did you receive Calvary? For the wages of sin is death, but life begins at the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, I am bringing you back to a time machine. I am bringing you back to about 33 A.D. We are in Jerusalem right now. The Lord Jesus Christ is upon the cross. He has been, uh, he has been beaten. He has been slain. He has been a sacrifice. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. He is on that cross. He is dying for your sins upon that cross. About 33 A.D. on that cross for your sins. He is dying. The heavens go black as God dumps all sin upon him. He says upon the cross, Father, forgive them for they do know not what they do. You know we know what you're doing. And on that cross he prayed for you.
One Roman soldier took an iron spear and pierced his side. And the blood in the water flowed out. What they say is a medical term for a broken heart. That's what they say. But that dead body laid upon the ground for your sins. Joseph of Alameda came down and he said, Pilate, give me that body. Pilate gave him the dead body of Jesus Christ. Pilate, the Roman governor of the land at that time, said the body of Jesus was dead. They wound that body quick as possible because we got to go celebrate the Passover. No, he's laying right there. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, the day of atonement, the Passover, is laying right there. They put him into a tomb. According to scriptures, part two of three of the gospel. He has died and he's laying in a tomb. Like many religious folks today are laying in tombs. They are buried. They're underground. They're anywhere but everywhere, but they're dead. The wages of sin has gotten them. The wages of your sin put Jesus in that tomb. Jesus never sinned. Now, let me bring you three days later in a garden by the tomb. It's very early in the morning. The sun hasn't even really risen yet. There are women there preparing spices as they're walking. They're going for the purpose to meet a dead body. They are bringing the Jewish rituals to take care of a dead body that they couldn't do a couple days before because it was the feast day of the Passover, a Sabbath of rest. It's been three days and three nights. And it can't be Friday because you can't get Friday to Sunday three days unless you've got common core math. Or a roll of toilet paper, eight equals twelve. I guess they're going to change the math so a church can be right. But it's been three days and three nights. There are women walking to the tomb of Jesus Christ according to Scripture. And they're talking. Mary, how on earth are we going to roll that big stone away? Never thought about it. I have no idea. There are Roman soldiers there. What are we going to do? They're not going to let us go in. Yeah. What are we going to do? How are we going to get to the dead body of Jesus Christ? That's the conversation they're about going to the tomb of Jesus as we talk about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They look up ahead and they see that stone has been rolled away. The stone is down. The soldiers are gone. And lo and behold, those women 
to Jerusalem upon a hill called Calvary on a Roman cross. For all the Jewish people, for all the Roman people, for all the Gentile people who witnessed that afternoon as Jesus Christ gave up the ghost on his own and died. As they took that body and put it into the tomb according to the scriptures, part two of the gospel. And the angels proclaimed, part three according to the scriptures, that he arose from the grave. Now how do you know that Jesus Christ arose from the grave? Over 411 people saw him in his resurrected state, and 11 of them, 13 of them, sat down and had a meal with him. And I ain't talking about a zombie apocalypse, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of all men, who has got victory over the grave, who has gotten victory over death by his being dead, being buried, and being risen again. All according to Scripture. That story of Calvary, that story of the empty tomb was because of you, sinner. Let's go back to the verse again. The wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you are a sinner. But, a conjunction. But, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. I believe by that verse, at the great white phone judgment, which you don't want to be at, in this day and age and period, if you're at the great white phone judgment, there is no hope for you. Because outside the rapture, if you're at the great white throne judgment, being a church age, you're condemned for life, the Bible said. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, life but the wrath of God abiding upon him. For the wages of sin is death, but the, the, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What you need to be saved has been provided by God. What God has provided for you is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. What you need to do to get to heaven has already been finished. It has already been emptied. It has already been done through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a finished work that religion and works cannot do. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, the Bible proclaims. Isaiah 53. It's amazing how the distractions of Satan when it comes to the gospel... The drums ain't played until the preaching started. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? I have. April 1987, I received Christ as my Savior. My name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life by believing on the Lamb of God which took away my sin. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a root of dry ground, he has no form or nor comeliness, and that we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus Christ will not show up on the Time Life magazine cover. Jesus Christ was your ordinary Jew, John chapter 1. He is despised and rejected of men, especially at the Daytona Farmer's Market every Saturday morning. You are 
despising and you are rejecting the Son of God, the testimony and the witness and what you need to be saved, you are proving Isaiah 53, chapter verse 3. Thank you very much. You have proved the Bible to be true. Now step out. Let us, God says. Come now, let us. And acquainted with grief. And we hid as if were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did stricken, esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. I am reading about the Lord Jesus Christ in Isaiah chapter 3, the suffering Messiah, the Son of God that died for you and died for me. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Healing. The ability to get over death lies in the Son of God that took the payment, that took the suffering, that took the whipping, that took death for us. Now getting saved is not going to stop your death. You will die. Getting saved will not make your life perfect. Getting saved is not winning the lottery. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ changes your destination when you die. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your ticket changes from the lake of fire to glory. And by the Holy Spirit, you become a child of God. By the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, you're going to die. But the gift of God's eternal life. God is offering you a gift right now. That gift is His Son, the finished work upon Calvary. The finished work, the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way to heaven is to have your sins washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the gospel that he died. He was buried according to the scriptures and arose again according to the scriptures. That is the only way God will receive you into his kingdom. By his son, nothing but his son, and only by his son. That is the way to heaven.